On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we are discussing Strange New Worlds 106, The Cloud Minders. Wait, no. Lift us where suffering cannot reach, right after these words <laughs> from our mystery sponsors. <laughs> Welcome to Star Trek Universe, the podcast where you get to listen to two lifelong friends talk about Star Trek. My name is Matthew Carroll. I am David C. Robertson. David. Yes. We got a, we got a new episode of Strange New Worlds. We're very we late in the week talking about it. I had a crazy I had a crazy schedule this week, so I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we're finally getting to it before the yeah, next one's out because it's almost here. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, what'd you think? What'd you think? Uh, you know how like def- people who are defending television or films will say like it's not the movie's fault you didn't understand it. You know that you know how people say that, right? And, well, and sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. But I'll admit some fault on this one. But you know, I, <laughs> man, I I was having like a real tough time. You know, <laughs> well, what didn't you I, understand? Like, what's the what? What didn't track like, for you? I don't know, man. There was like a couple of. It just like, seemed like a really it, simple one to me. It came together right for me, but there was like a couple of acts there where I was like, I don't know, man. Maybe it was because there were a lot of there were a lot of new things to take in. You know, there was like Magellus, there was Gamal, there was the first servant, there was Alora, there was the this. Uh, the, I can't even remember the name of this. The the other colony that was like an right. enemy colony, but it like turned out that's a lie. Mm-hmm. And it just took a minute and I felt better because my wife who's much smarter than me paused <laughs> it and said, is the first servant, the little boy? And I was like, I think so. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> it was just like, there was a lot. Right. I think you guys also just missed that. Cause that was pretty clearly stated at the very yeah. beginning. And they, they kept calling him the first servant because they were like, right. I am, I am a, I am here to only to make sure the first servant makes it to his ascension. They kept calling it, you know? Right, right, right. And you know, sometimes it's a thing where it's like, I didn't, you know, maybe I wasn't fully as invested as I thought I was, you know, maybe I was preoccupied with food. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what was wrong. Well, uh, your confusion aside, I thought this was a really simple plot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't say that because well, no, I don't say that in response to your confusion. Was. That's what I was going to say was that it was kind of like, it, I, that's my initial thought of this is it's a very like streamlined plot for a strange right. new worlds. There's not a lot of other characters involved the there's the ahura stuff but it all feeds right into this main plot and it's basically just little boy they want him to ascend right. the dad wants to escape with him for some reason and then we uh, find out the reason at the end and it's terrifying yeah and well the other thing was though i feel like they were pretty unclear about what was going on because they were trying to not unveil that horrible big reveal at the end because they were acting like, like, oh, he was just going to be like, he was going to be this like great leader. Because there was several things. Well, and yeah. Maybe it was partially. They were saying was that like, to the Federation folks. Right, but they right, were right. They were lying on purpose. And they, that's why at well, the I end, that. at the end, they bring Pike down there and they start right. to not let him see what happens. And yeah, then she says, no, he can see. So I think like that's just something they don't tell outsiders. Right. And for good reason. I wound up like loving the ending. Me too. And I, I mean, and we stopped though. The show was over and Bethany looks at me and goes, how's that for stakes? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think I got in my own head a little bit because there were several things that were going on in the episode that made, it was like, I felt like there were red herrings. Like they threw it in there to like trick me. Okay. You know, like um, at the beginning there was, and at the end of the day, like I kind of like being confused on stuff like this because it, let, <laughs> it lets me work it out and then be like, oh right. shit, that wasn't what was happening at all. I, so there was part of me that was, uh, where there was a whole bit where there was like the, what, what was his name? Gamal was like, I was a doctor until I was, I became the father of the of a servant and now I'm just his doctor. So it seemed like he was pissed. Like he was like mad and thought like if I could take my kid, I could become a doctor again. So there was that interesting i got that feeling um the little boy overhearing the bit with mbinga made me think like he's gonna make it into law that like outsiders can have this chip and that's how mbinga is gonna save his daughter nope that's not what they did Mm -mm. it was just like they kept doing these little things that made me think ah oh wait that's not what they're doing that's that's a great great experience I, i think that's wonderful 
I just, I think I like really the twist ending I saw coming from a mile. I don't know why, especially once the father tries to escape with the boy. I was like, well, Yo. clearly the Ascension is not a good thing. Um, and, and like, there just seemed, there seemed to me when they talk about a child ascending, mm-hmm. I'm immediately skeptical of those people. Right. <laughs> Sounded like cult like <laughs> behavior fair. from the first scene. I was like, Oh, the Ascension is not going to be good. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be killing him. I thought that was all it was. But then at the end it was like, what? and I think they say something like, is he, is he conscious or something like he's like, yes, he absolutely is. I was like, oh, yeah. damn, that is dark oh, is he suffering. Does he will he suffer? Yes. Yep. Um, mm, yeah, that it's is terrible. super dark. So, yeah, I think they like set out to like trick me. Interesting. And people like me. <laughs> like, they're like, we're going to throw in the red herrings to make it seem like, oh, this is how they'll solve the episode. Like we have legitimately done in all the other episodes and they're like we're gonna get those cynical bastards and they did they right. got me yeah they no, got that's me. great because that i was is just great. like oh the little boy's gonna make it law uh. right no see <laughs> i expected the twist but i didn't uh-huh. necessarily expect them to lose you know what i mean like and that's right. something i've been saying for the last couple of years about the orville that i really love is mm-hmm. they just don't always win and for right. a, especially for the comedy version of like star trek parody like mm-hmm. you expect them to be even lighter and sometimes they just lose you know and it's yeah. like dang it, it's, it hurts and you you feel the stakes you know and yeah like this one was one of those episodes mm-hmm. and i was really happy to see it and i was also just like i we were talking about last week like memorable things from these episodes what will we remember you know what yeah. will feel indelible at, at, in the that kid sitting in that thing like Look, sitting down so brave and then as they came into his face like these little like probes start to head toward his face yeah. he just starts to cry and then goes completely cold and like yeah. oh it's terrifying and then talking about how he's suffering damn and to me like the 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 really disgusting bit that's gonna stick with me is when they wheel that other first servant out and he sees the dead body and goes oh my god yeah, like the kid realizes what he's what he has to do. Yeah, like it's that terrifying. was rough, oh. dude. That was disgusting, and uh, yeah. So I wound up really enjoying the episode uh, <laughs> for the most part. Like I was confused. I'll admit it. I'm not. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm, I'm not a bright man. No, no shame at being confused. I honestly envy your experience because that's a fun way to experience any of these shows. The smartest I've ever been was using the word dullard to describe myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, I, 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 I was, well, I was just trying to second guess the episode so mm-hmm. much. I was just like, oh, the dad's in it. He's in, he's in on it with these other cats and they're going to like, mm-hmm. or like maybe he, uh, he thinks if he could take out his son, he can be the a doctor on that world and, um, or pros- prospectus, I think is what it was called. And uh, I just kept like coming up with all these different little theories that like were just like no, this is just like a really simple dark thing. Yeah. Um, now, where the the show really falters for me is, I am like, okay, you guys found you, you know, Laura says, or uh, we or Laura, whatever her name is, said we've we've tried for hundreds of years to figure out a better way to do this. I'm like, you just go to another planet. Like, our shit will fall out of the sky into the lava. Cool. Go to another planet. Of course, here's the good thing about COVID. The great thing about COVID <laughs> is it really extended <laughs> my suspension of disbelief. <laughs> of, of how a society would react to a terrifying yeah, situation. because I'm just like, you know, just wear a mask and get vaccinated. No! <laughs> we like our cloud city. No, absolutely. And and I mean, they seem like they live on a paradise, you know? Yeah. And so that's the thing of this episode. And honestly, mm-hmm. it's kind of the heart of it, especially mm-hmm. with the Pike question of him needing somewhere that can heal his body after the accident. And this is absolutely an option that can, if he wants to come there, yeah. he can be there and solve his problem, his, his terrible problem that can't be solved, mm-hmm. can be solved this through this place. And he is, you know, no, he's, he's like, no, I don't. I I would never accept this. But then she has this scathing question. I love that she kind of gets the last word. And yeah, she, she does. She says, "Like, can you guarantee me? Can you tell me there's no child suffering so that the Federation can exist?" Mm-hmm. And he can't do that. Like we've seen it in other other treks now. Like 
the ex- the federation mm-hmm. is expansive and certain corners of it uh you know get stepped on uh, you know, you know the, not not to say like the federation has gone to war or the federation is yeah. you know uh had outposts destroyed for their ideals you know like kids have died and suffered for this yeah and she says like the only difference between us is i look I, we look right at the child and we say we, we thank them for their sacrifice and it's yeah. like that's not a bad argument. Like I wouldn't live on this. I wouldn't want to live on this world either. I would want to find another way, but like, mm-hmm. and it, what I, what I like is that other world, the prospectus, whatever. Um, like y- you can sort of think about it and, and sort of headcanon the fact that like, there are people who leave, you know, like yeah. they, they're their enemies because these are people who wouldn't live this way, you know, mm-hmm. and they've gone to another world. And, and, and the dad says at the end, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to save the next one. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to yeah. be there to save the next one. And that's ah, a great, it's great, man. I'll tell you another thing, uh, because she had said that bit about, uh, how you had to live on Magellus or whatever to get the treatment. I was like, oh, my God, that's what happens to Mbenga's daughter. Like, she has to go away and live on that planet without him. That's so mm-hmm. tragic. Like, dude, like, I was, like, wrapped up in a lot of different shit. <laughs> like, like, they were throwing stuff at me. And I was like, oh, that's what's going to happen. You were just no. jumping on everything. No, it's just very simple plot. And I, and I, I thought it was yeah. cool, man. But, like, you know, a couple of minutes after, like, she, they were talking about, like, how he could go back there. And I was like, well, we know that's not what he does. Oh, some shit's going to go wrong. This is mm-hmm. bad. Like, this kid is not, like, that's what it zeroed in for me. That was like, oh, this kid is screwed. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From, from It's so funny, because, like, yeah, from the beginning when they said this child will ascend, I was like, well, that's not good. Yeah. And then, and yeah. then as soon as, <laughs> and then as, when his dad tries to rescue him, I was like, well, his dad is, and then I, lo- I love the moment with his dad. His dad's just like. I I broke every oath I've made. I broke my core beliefs because mm-hmm. like he is a believer in the system, but then his child, when it's his child's turn to suffer, right. he can't take it. And yeah, that's and yeah. he's broken his every belief to make this happen. I maintain they actively tried to make us think that he was pissed off at this kid for screw for taking away his life as a doctor. I didn't get that at all, dude. I, dude, I know I know I, the line you're talking about, but I just took it as like this child is incredibly important to their civilization. Like that's all I that's I the only he reason I took it. Pissed. He, <laughs> he seemed didn't pissed seem to pissed to me. me at all. He seemed like a dick like he half seemed, the episode. He seemed totally I I totally disagree. He seemed totally resigned when he said it like, "No, this is my only patient." Because this is the I, it seemed like totally like this is the oath I took. This is the only <laughs> thing I care about is this child and then he genuinely cared about Mbinga and his his patient but he was just like yeah. he even says like halfway through he's like even before all this is solved yeah, yeah, yeah. or all this is over he, he <laughs> says he says like uh Maybe one day, maybe one. He's a, he to me. He seemed like like a hopeful See, dude. Like I don't know why you thought he was yeah, angry. Like, <laughs> like later on, he seemed more hopeful. But like at the beginning, it seemed like he was a dick. Like, I, I didn't get that when he I was just know. like taking the thing. He's like, no, I'm gonna scan the thing. You don't, I just th- thought he you seemed know. like someone with much better medical technology. Like looking down on them a little yeah. bit, maybe. But I didn't think he seemed angry. I thought he seemed yeah. like no. Watch out, your 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 child's play compared to what I can do. I know what I'm doing here. Right. Yeah, it's funny how we got two different things. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's you know, I don't know. I don't, neither one of us want kids, though, right? So I mean, <laughs> yeah, not particularly. Maybe it's just like Arr, kids. <laughs> yeah, it took away my life. Arr. It's so funny. <laughs> Between us talking that way and then Ashley Coffin, who also does not have any desire for kids, it's funny to it, it, like how many of the podcasters on the network are like, ah, children. <laughs> it's like <laughs> we've we've assuaged the world of like uh, giving birth to children to this world. Like to have, yeah. uh, our progeny is our podcasts. <laughs> you know what it is? You know, <laughs> we you know, people will tell us you never grew up. You're a man child, you mm-hmm. know, or whatever. They do every day. Yeah. So I think it's like, we don't want, I'm like standing here, like, uh, you know how like a kid will be on the playground and another kid comes up and you're like, ah, it's my toy. Ah. <laughs> you want to do that without the physical comedy, the, the visual comedy yeah. that made you hit your microphone? <laughs> I know. Shut up, man. No, no, no. Oh. It's fine. You were doing it for me, but I was like, I was doing for, it for you, for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> that'll just be you in the microphone 
audience. <laughs> You're right. We'll leave it in. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, three of you. <laughs> Sorry, all three of you. Oh, man. Sorry, mom. I'm just kidding. My mom doesn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> As we've said in other weeks, I've really enjoyed the world building of Strange New Worlds, and I've enjoyed the mm-hmm. uh, character uh, character building is, I guess, more what I mean. I like all the characters a lot. This was yeah. the first episode that felt like a contained Star Trek story. And I liked it. I liked it a lot. Mm. I really like what they did in this episode. All the other episodes to me have kind of felt like they were only character building. And I didn't feel like the story itself had a lot of meat to it. As I said, I don't feel like they're indelible episodes that I'll think of and remember maybe the Gorn Mm. episode, but that's just more of like a tactical battle episode than anything. This one was like one with a moral question and like a real struggle for the captain. And like, I just, I I liked it a lot. That's one of the things that I really liked about this episode but that's one of the things I like about Star Trek is that they can do all these ki- different kinds of episodes. Oh, and absolutely. They can be kind of somewhat memorable. I think the Gordon episode will be memorable for me. Um, I think, though, what I loved most about this episode is that, you know, Pike was in the same boat as me in a lot of ways because he was like, yeah, dude, let's stop these guys from trying to kidnap this kid. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the they were the saviors. They were the people trying to save the kid. Yeah. And he just delivered the kid right back into the hands of the people who were killing him. Yeah. And, like, yeah, they won, but it wasn't a win. Mm-hmm. That was It was a big fail. And uh, I really, I did. I, I enjoyed that, that part of it and how, mm-hmm. you know, uh, also loved, you know, how annoyed he was that he couldn't keep having sex, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You mean? Cuz cuz they were like they were like, "Well, we need you back here." And then he comes he's on the bridge and he's like, "All right, tell me what was so important that I had to like be oh, on the bridge okay, to see gotcha. it." I thought you meant he was like he was like in bed with her and they called him. No, no, no. Like, Damn it. I, I got you. I thought you meant I- I was thinking about like oh, after the kid, after the kid thing, after and then the there's kid. that moment he's sitting on the bri- he's sitting on his re- in his like a uh, uh, captain's quarter, staring out the window with like a glass of scotch or something. Like he's he's like got the one leg up, and it's just like that pensive pose. And I was thinking, mm-hmm. oh man, he's thinking about that poor kid and his suffering. And I thought that you were thinking, man, he's really sad. He can't fuck anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, there's that too. He's like, I've got ten years. I don't have that much time. I'm going to become a melted husk. He hasn't seen the part where he gets to have sex with Vina in the Telosian cage mm. for the rest of his life. Nope, he doesn't. And, see you know, that part. and he's in his brain in that, so he could do all kinds of crazy shit, <laughs> knowing that he's true he's just in his true. mind. You know, true, true. It's like that's some acrobatic gymnastic shit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but he doesn't know that yet so all he knows is he's gonna be like this you know wilted husk of a of a fella mm-hmm. and uh his, his peeps is gonna be on the fritz as they say that's all they say that's uh, what they say <laughs> i enjoyed uh laan and uh and ahura's bits oh yeah for with, sure uh yeah with the whole like training to be a security officer and yeah and I know they've been doing this every episode, but like Ahura has been with a different, yeah. uh, but it kind of just resonated with me this episode that, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's what she's like doing her rotations. And instead yeah. of like following, you know, a bridge crew member getting a different crewman every week, mm-hmm. we're following a crewman through the process. And that's kind of neat. That's a neat yeah. uh, device that they've done this season. And I, I didn't really notice honestly yeah. until this episode. <laughs> and And that in itself is kind of a tragedy. You know what I mean? It's like she's learning how to do all this stuff. She's being put through the rigors, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, all ringer, of that right? will put through the ringer rigors. Is it rigors? Like rigorous? Yeah. I've always heard put through the ringer. I've been through the ringer, but you're put through your rigors. I, yeah. I, 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 did. I think. I don't know. Anyway, she's she's doing all this stuff, learning all this stuff, all to culminate in five, at least five years of just saying hailing frequencies open captain and that's sad it's the tragedy of uhura <laughs> she's gonna sit in that chair with that thing hanging out of her ear 
uh, for several years, and then she's going to do a fan dance in about 30 years after that and make everybody angry. Mm. Yep. That's it. That's all That's she it. gets. That's all she gets. It is put through the <laughs> ringer. Just so ringer? you know. Yeah, it's put through the I ringer. Thought, uh, riggers. Yeah, rig- there is no put through the riggers. I, I searched <laughs> it. just doesn't exist. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Riggers, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not right. Just no, no, no big deal. I mean, hey, you know, I told you, we I'm, learn. I'm, I'm a dullard. <laughs> you use that one right, dullard. Just to, I know, I know. <laughs> just to give you, I'm really, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to be supportive by telling you you're a hundred percent correct. <laughs> yeah, about ten years ago, I looked that word up just to make sure it wasn't an ethnic slur. <laughs> Nope, nope. <laughs> I'm like, this sounds like a slur for like Dutch people or something. I'm gonna go check that out, and make sure. <laughs> it does have no, no. Okay, good. Does have similar letters. There you go. I mean, you know, I didn't know. you never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know these days. You don't want to get, get canceled when you find out that you've been saying dullard for years. And <laughs> I'm very concerned. <laughs> I know. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? <laughs> Look, we we grew we grew up in Alabama. Like half of the shit we say down here, it's oh, like you man. find out, like, oh no, that wasn't right. You shouldn't have said that. Nope, shouldn't have said that at all, man. That was a that, that definitely like starting the podcast over the years. Uh, uh, we we had a, a few learning uh, moments for sure where people were like, "That is an offensive term." We're like, "Oh, you didn't know that." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that's the thing yeah. is like, I think, and the thing is generally people are okay with it if you just are genuinely wrong and you're and you're willing to be like oh yeah Yeah. sorry about that i won't do that anymore (laughs) yeah so i I don't know cancellation i feel like most of the times happens when someone is like intentionally pushing at something that they you know they know they shouldn't do you know yeah. Or, or or they they refuse to like just learn and apologize when they realize what they've been doing or whatever was harmful. Yeah, we uh, feel free to cut this if you want. Your call. I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna uh, say. I'm yeah, nervous yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so we grew up in Montgomery, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of racist white people refer to it as Monkey Town. Oh, there are a lot of black people there. Mm. So I had a family member who was always very progressive and said, you know, you're not, we're not supposed to hate these people, et cetera, et cetera. And then one day they whip out the term monkey town very casually. And we're like, what are you talking about? This is racist. And they were like, no, it's not. My father used to say he was coming back to monkey town because he called us his little monkeys. And we had to like break it to them. No. Your father was a racist. And you've been saying that around people for years. <laughs> oh, gosh. It, and they were very upset. They, they oh, didn't man. find it. It wasn't like a Randall from Clerks 2, I'm taking it back situation. Right, right, right. Like, it was like, it oh, was, wow. Oh, shit. You know, I'm in my 40s. I should have been saying that. <laughs> I've never used that term. I've heard that term. Uh-huh. I never knew the implications. Really? Yeah, just didn't. I didn't. I would heard people say because it's Montgomery, like it just sounds yeah. kind of similar, right. which is why it works and why people use it, it as yeah. a as a pejorative or whatever. I've heard it over the years. I don't even know who I've heard it from, but I, you know, I lived I lived there. Heard yeah, people say you just it. Hear it. Never, never understood the implication of that. <laughs> yeah. So luckily, I had enough racist people in my life that I knew exactly what it meant. Oh well, that's but, that's good. At least you had an education. This, this person in my life did not. Yeah, it's like yeah, that's the you've you've surrounded yourself with good people, and this is what's happened. <laughs> Sometimes you need a bad person in your life here and there. You need you need a couple of bad apples, a couple of rotten. <laughs> a couple. You know what they apples. say? Couple rotten apples enhances the whole bunch. <laughs> That's yeah. what they say, it's right? Like, well, you know where the worms are. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you learn to recognize a, a worm-ridden soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's uh, that's inappropriate to put on air. I, I don't know. I don't know. I probably... I have no idea. It, it, I, I don't think... I don't think... Uh, I don't think it's like a racial slur. It's just a word people said used in a bad way, so... Yeah, I think yeah. you're okay. I think you're okay. Yeah. 
if people are very offended, if that, you know, offends yeah. you. Yeah, I, I don't think I your story is offensive. It. Obviously, the, the term is offensive. No. I now know. <laughs> Yeah, no, you need to know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I don't, I, maybe there was just like a, a sense that it was offensive. Right. Without, uh, you know. You have gigs. You go down to Montgomery enough. You don't need to, you know, just think, oh, that's a funny term for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, Definitely. Uh, we, we do have a, uh, we have a thing from Stu. <laughs> yeah, Stu, hope you made if it. If you want to talk about that. Hope you made it through the uh, discussion of the racial term for Montgomery. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right so i apologize Stu. i have not read this yet i just i like two seconds before matt called me or messaged me i was like oh shit i didn't check and see if Stu had, and then i just copied and pasted it so, <laughs> i love that you're like check if Stu had instead of like see if we had any feedback <laughs> yeah yeah no no i get it no no it was Stu. like it's yeah, always yeah. Stu. i love it like well, it's I, always Stu. we were well, we, good with that we've had fine. a few other people lately but we, Stu, Stu's always, yeah. Stu's, Stu's this yeah. tried and true fellow. Yeah. Timothy, Timothy. Yeah. yeah. Missed you this week, Timothy. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Shame. 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 Guilt. Shame. Guilt. Shame. Guilt. Shame. Guilt. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes for everyone else, too, not just Timothy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Stu no, is no. the only, Stu is the only I, righteous I, child. My, okay. I was targeting <laughs> Timothy. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Stu is the first servant. <laughs> you will ascend. Let's let's let Stu ascend. Read his feedback. <laughs> yeah. Uh, head, head, subject line: Make sure your partner is not okay with child sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Stu says. Sorry, I get. I got this. Like you know. And he writes. <laughs> um, this episode was good. With a nice idea and continue, continue some character based subplots as well as show us Pike's more romantic side. It just felt a little understated overall and how it approached what was going on. The big reveal is pretty horrifying, but Pike's reaction made him seem like he wasn't really mad at Alora, just disappointed. It'd be like if Charlton Heston's reaction at the end of Soylent Green was ew. Or if Charlton Heston's, Charlton Heston's reaction at the end of Planet of the Apes was, oh, right, now I get it. Man, I'm dumb. Or if Charlton Heston and Ben Hur was like, <laughs> you're all right, Jesus. <laughs> Other thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> that was well done, Stu. It was I well done, say. Stu. I liked it a lot. <laughs> Other thoughts, Pike's hair is back at full power this week. The fight at the beginning made me think we were getting a, a pack-led origin story. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> That's good. Two episodes in a row where Laan's approach to work is used for comedy. Do you think there was a decision to lighten the character up a bit after the previous episode showed her in a more serious and angsty way? Probably. They probably went, we're going a little hard on her right now. Let's, let's pull back. Uh, he says, I came up with a joke based off of uh, Mbinga's <laughs> plot this episode. David, you can do this one with Matt's participation. All right. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting transporter system. Interrupting transporter system. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wonder if this <laughs> I wonder if this episode this was the episode Jonathan Frakes was originally going to direct. He's worked with Lindy Booth when he helmed episodes of The Librarians, or maybe it's just because the plot felt kind of Rikerish. I didn't get Riker off of this, but I could see it. Maybe the sex. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe there's the there's that. There's the sex. There's the just like going down to a pl it this sort of reminds me of that episode mm -hmm. there he goes down and like runs around the planet with all the uh i don't know people in little bitty baby togas <laughs> <laughs> baby togas <laughs> no nope, i think it's just because he scuttled her butt you know what i mean mm. anyway uh <laughs> oh pike's annoyance that he had to interrupt his banging session to go back to the ship for a briefing <laughs> nice clearly i liked that one too Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the fact they tried to find alternatives for centuries, but never decided to just move to another planet is some sort of commentary on society valuing convenience over sacrifice, 
The way their society's development was based off of the first servant wasn't explained in a lot of detail, so it was a bit unclear. I agree. I really want to know why this kid's brain is what powers their whole society. Like, yeah, like needed, what is it actually needed, doing? Yeah, I needed Jordy in a briefing room spouting off some techno babble. So I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like I know. Yeah, you you kind of get it, like, yeah, the idea, and that's all that they wanted because they wanted to shock us at the end. You know? Yeah, I have been simultaneously impressed and reviled by how much new star Trek has eschewed techno babble mm. because they used it as a crutch on TNG for sure. Oh, for sure. And on Voyager. <laughs> I never mind techno babble. And I think I even like, I think I learned a lot from techno babble as a kid, even when it's utter nonsense, like the concepts yeah. sometimes they're like, you just start to get concepts. Like you understand kind of what quantum means because of how they use it in certain contexts. Right, right, when right. you're six, you're like, Oh, that's kind of con- quantum means this sort of shifting thing that I, okay, I kind of get it. And then you sort of get these concepts. I like that aspect of star Trek as a kid. I, I think I learned a lot from star Trek. Um, mm-hmm. But what's what TNG does that drives me nuts is they will solve a plot with nothing but techno babble. Yeah. That is where it is not okay. Like you can tell us what your options are using techno babble, but then you have to make a choice. You can't just, Oh no, we have to solve it. I'm going to say a thing that means nothing. And then the plot is solved. And that happens all right. the time on TNG. Yeah, it's like Data will throw out some like long thing, mm-hmm. or like, Jordy will say a long thing, and then Data will say a long thing, and he goes, "Data, you're a genius. It's just like blowing up a balloon and rubbing it on somebody's hair. The friction will yeah. keep the ship intact." What the hell but are you so, about? that's more than they get a lot of times. A lot of times, it's like <laughs> it's like they're beating us. We're about to explode. What if I reverse the polarity on the ion beams? Do it, and then oh, it's oh yeah, it, 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 yeah. it'll give us a chance, and then they win. You know, it's just like it. it Right. It, it's yeah. Yeah. That's I hate that. It's like my least favorite I do too. Star Trek. <laughs> I do too. So there's 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 like an element to it where I'm just like Yes, I like techno babble, but then like there's way too much techno babble. Like I just want just enough to like feel like there's some like actual science happening mm-hmm. rather than like but I, I'm not, I'm a dullard, as I said, so I don't need to be real science. I just need to sound good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you sound like you're, uh, you're believe in science, service, and sacrifice. You know, that's all you really yeah. need. And that's what, that's one of the things that drives me nuts about a lot of Star Trek fans is they're like, we're, this is supposed to be hard science, hard science fiction. I'm like, it was never hard science fiction. None of that shit means anything most of the time. Right. I'm sorry. Like they, I don't know how many times they've said, you know, like Mila Cochran's. That is a made up term that is named after Zephram Cochran, a fictional character. That's not real. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, guys. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So why didn't Wesley Crusher show up to recruit this special child? Was it jealousy that one was far more special and much less annoying than he was? (laughs) I really do. I'm, I'm sad for that kid. You know what my head cannon is fixed point in time, Stu. Wesley can't do anything. It's just like the doctor. Sometimes on Doctor Who, he can't do the thing because fixed point in time. And then mm-hmm. when he does shit like, you know, uh, the Peter Capaldi's character in Torchwood happens. And then his family bites it because time is fixing itself. And he has to, like, kill himself and his whole family because they weren't supposed to live. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Vaguely. <laughs> that was like, I don't think they ever explicitly said that. But that was a thing that like Russell T. Davies said is like Peter Capaldi's family was supposed to, and his family was supposed to die in the fires of Pompeii on Doctor Who. Right. So like later on in Torchwood, he played a bad guy who winds up killing himself and his whole family. And he was they were descendants of that Pompeii family. And it was like the timeline correcting itself because the doctor like went against the fixed point in time and saved them. Wow. Interesting. Right. That's cool. I, I dig that. I love that. I dig that a lot. <laughs> It, it sounds like maybe a little bit of a uh, headcanon, but it comes from the guys writing it. So, you know, yeah, that's yeah. kind of headcanon. Yep. That's what I did. Yeah. Is that all Stu I mean, had sure. to say? That's all. He said, Stu, take care. 
That was wonderful feedback. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. It was very that fun. That was delightful. Very fun. You, you write more jokes in your shit, man. <laughs> You it did good. Enhance our podcast with humor, man. Come on, <laughs> not the knock knock necessarily, but you had some you had some clever uh, bits in there. Oh uh, yeah, no, Stu's always funny. Stu's always funny. Not always. Sometimes he's just petulant. <laughs> <laughs> There's almost always a good subject line in there. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, the subject lines Plus, are gold. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, Gornhub well, yeah, Gorn- shot us up to the top ten. Yep, Gornhub and time podcasts. Mm-hmm. Like we went viral over Gornhub. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Well, uh, we appreciate you listening to Star Trek Universe. We'll be back uh, soon, uh, really soon, hopefully, because this. Oh, actually, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this week either. I may have to do it early next oh, week. I know. Damn. I know. My damn, uh, Alyssa's grandmother passed away. So we're, oh, we have a uh, funeral on Saturday, and she's coming into town Thursday and flying in, and I got to mm-hmm. drive her to Huntsville and like bounce around the state to play in Montgomery, yeah. and then go back to Huntsville. It's gonna be a whole thing. So I don't know if uh, I, I think I can squeeze it in at some point though before before the weekend because it always hits the weekend, and then I just can't do anything till Tuesday, mm-hmm. Monday or Tuesday, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I don't know. I think we're doing we're recording it next week, but we are recording two episodes. Uh, I assume without you, but you can join us absolutely if you want, if you can. Uh, me and my sister-in-law, Christiana, are going to uh, do a couple of episodes. She has now watched all of the uh, the original series and the animated series. She's a newcomer to Star Trek. She's got thoughts. I want to hear her thoughts, and I've got questions. Mm. And uh, I thought it would be interesting to get an interview with someone who is new to Star Trek and get their take on the original series and the animated series. Absolutely. So, what Did she start there? Has she done anything else? Yeah. Okay. No, okay. So she no, started at the beginning. Cool. I believe that's, that's that is she That is very interesting to see someone of a younger generation getting into that. Yeah. That's rare. Barely, Barely younger. Like 29. But yeah. That's <laughs> so much younger than me. <laughs> I sh- I'm trying to t- help us. <laughs> nope. We're so old. We're very beyond help, my friend. <laughs> we can still lie. We're this is audio. Just throw me in a little <laughs> chair and put little probes in my head. Stick a probe in my head. I'm done. <laughs> One beep for yes, two beeps for no. That's how Matt will be podcasting. It's like <laughs> stranded <laughs> panda in like two years. We'll be like, so Matt, what did you think of the the new season of Miss Marvel? Boop boop. <laughs> Somebody give me some fan art with a panda in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the that's my future Boop. one beep for yes <laughs> i agree <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well we'll be back uh soon peace on true live long prosper and have strange gymnastic sex on talos 4 in your head in my mind in my mind i i I almost said it and i was like no that doesn't relate but it does i knew it (laughs) thank you for listening to the star trek universe podcast a stranded panda production if you'd like to hear more from david c robertson check out the dc on screen podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos if you'd like to hear more from matthew carroll check out the marvel cinematic universe podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music.